PyCharm is an outstanding and powerful development environment for Python. Because it has so many features and is so flexible, it can be a little difficult to configure. I'll assume that you have PyCharm installed, set up, and you can use it to run Python 3 programs. If not, there are many other videos on how to get started with PyCharm and use the correct Python interpreter. In this video, I'll focus on one key feature of PyCharm, the fully integrated debugger. Right from the start, I have to say that the name debugger is a misnomer. A debugger will not remove bugs from your program. If it did, the work of a programmer would not be very difficult. Instead, a debugger is a tool that helps programmers identify the cause of bugs so that they can fix the code causing the error. The first thing to know about PyCharm for development and debugging is that PyCharm is designed to allow you to work on a Python project that consists of multiple files. In fact, a typical setup is that you have a project folder where you put all the files associated with your project. If you do not have PyCharm open, you can drag and drop your folder on the PyCharm application icon. If you already have PyCharm open, then you can drag your folder onto the splash screen. PyCharm keeps some hidden files in a folder to keep track of your project. Once the window opens, PyCharm displays the contents of your project folder on the left side, and you can easily double-click on any or all files to open and show them. Each file opens as a tab. So even if you have only a single file program, I recommend that you put that file in a folder so that you can easily open the project by dragging and dropping it this way. Okay, let's get into debugging. Consider the typical scenario where you write some code and you run your program, but something goes wrong. The program runs, but you're not getting the results that you expect. Here's an example. Let's say I'm trying to write a program to calculate the costs of buying different amounts of donuts. My donut store has the following pricing. If you buy less than 12 donuts, then each one costs $1.50. If you buy 12 or more, then you pay $12 for the 12 that make up the dozen, then $1.25 for each additional donut. But if you buy more than two dozen, then you pay $20 for the first two dozen, and $1 for each donut after that. Here's what I should get as output. When I write my program, I'll use some of these to test if the program is working correctly. I've written a program to implement this. The calculations are all done in a single function where you pass in the number of donuts, and it returns a related price. The function contains an if, elif, else that is intended to handle the cases of up to a dozen donuts, up to two dozen donuts, and more than two dozen. The main code consists of a few calls to this function, and then printing out the results. If you have a sharp eye, you may already see the bugs in the program, but the idea is to understand how to use the debugger as a tool to track down these. In PyCharm, you first have to ensure that you're going to run the correct file. If you right-click on the code of the program you want to run, you get a context menu. From that menu, you select the name of the program you want to be the main program to run. Once you set that, you can then run the program by just clicking on the Run button. When I run this program, I see that I am not getting the results that I expect. Time to debug! The traditional method of tracking down bugs in a program is to add calls to the print function to write out the value of one or more variables. When you run your program, output is written to the shell window. That certainly works, but it has a number of drawbacks. First, before you run your program, you have to decide where you want to add lines to print and what information you want to be output. Second, in the output that's generated, it's often difficult to go back and match the data that was written out to the code that created these lines. Third, when you are done, you have to remove all the calls to print that you added. With a debugger, you use a very different approach. Rather than looking at the output after the program runs, a debugger allows you to walk through your code step by step and look at the values of your variables as your code executes. In order to understand how to use a debugger, I have to introduce a concept called a breakpoint. A breakpoint is a marker on a line of code where the programmer wants the program to pause. When you want to debug your program, 
you set one or more breakpoints in your code. When the program gets to a line with a breakpoint, it pauses and gives you control. To set a breakpoint on a line in PyCharm, you click in the area to the right of a line number and to the left of a line of code. When you click, a red dot shows up to indicate that a breakpoint has been set. You can set as many breakpoints as you want. Breakpoints are toggles. That is, you click to create a breakpoint, but if you click on an existing breakpoint, that breakpoint is removed. You can set a breakpoint on any line of code. When you are debugging a larger program, you typically have a feeling for where something is going wrong, and you decide where it would be a logical place or places to set breakpoints. Since this is a small program, I'll start by setting one breakpoint right at the first executable line in the main code. Once one or more breakpoints are set, we're ready to run. But rather than clicking on the Run button, you click on this button, the Debugger button. It's shaped like a bug. This starts the program running, but it stops when it reaches a line with a breakpoint. With this example program, execution starts, but immediately stops at the first breakpoint. In the source code window, there is a highlight on the line of code with the breakpoint. The highlight indicates which line of code is about to execute. Now there are a number of options represented by these buttons here and these buttons here. I'm using a Mac and this is the default layout. These buttons may be in a different place on Windows, but they work the same way. Here are the meanings of these buttons. This button is the Step Over button. Clicking on this button says, execute this line of code, and even if it contains a function call, run the entire line of code and stop at the next line. The next button is the Step Into button. That says, if the next line contains a call to a function, step into that function and stop at the first line there. The next button is the Step Into My Code button. This is like the Step Into button, but ensures that it only runs your code, not code of, say, the Python standard library, or any code that you import from libraries. The next important one is the Step Out button. This one says, if we are in a function, run the code until the current function finishes, then stop when the function returns. Over on the side, there are two more important buttons. This button is the Resume Program button. That says, continue running until we reach the next breakpoint. And this one says, stop running. So now the program is stopped, waiting for me to press some button. At this point, I see that this line contains a function call, so I'll click on the Step Into My Code button to execute that call. As you can see, execution went into my function and stopped at the first line there. Let's just step through this code and see what happens. I'll click on the Step button. Since the value of n donuts passed in was 6, I can see that the program correctly took the first branch of my if statement. If I step again, twice, and the next line to be executed is where I add up the total of the individual donuts and the dozen of donuts. One more step and I'm at the return statement. If I step through that, I'm back in the main code about to assign a variable there. Stepping again, I'm at the call to print. One more step and I'm about to execute the next call. To the left of the main debugger buttons, there are tabs for two panels. The second one is the standard console panel. It shows the output of any calls to print and allows the user to enter data in response to a call to input. The first tab is the debugger panel. This will allow you to see the value of all variables that are currently in scope when you reach a breakpoint or step through your code. Right now, we can see that the value of the global variable order1, which has the correct value for the first order, of 6 donuts costing $9. Now I'll execute the next line by clicking on the Step Into My Code button to run the function again. When I do this, there are two important additional things to notice. 
First, when we enter the function, the debugger panel now contains the values of any variables available in that function. The values of these variables are also printed after a line where the variable is first seen, but these may sometimes be a little difficult to notice. Second, there is a small window in the bottom left. This is called the stack trace. Here you can see how we got to where we are. If you read the black lines from the bottom up, you will see that the main module made a call to the calculate price function. Every time a new function or method is called, another line is added to the stack trace. Whenever the code returns from a function or method, the top line in the stack trace will be removed. Let's step through this code and watch the debugger panel. You can see how every time a new local variable is created, it is added to the panel. So far, we are getting correct results. The first two values were exactly what we expected. But the next answer is not correct. Let's continue to step through the code and see what goes wrong. This time, when I step into the function, watch the values in the debugger panel. When I step into the function, it takes the proper elif branch. In this call, I am purchasing 13 donuts. The cost should be $12 for the dozen, plus $1.25 for a single dozen. But the debugger window shows us that the individual donuts cost $3.75. Looking back at the line that calculates the cost of the individual donuts, I can see that the cost for individual donuts is set to the price times the number of donuts minus 10. But there are 12 donuts in a dozen. Here's the bug. This should be changed to 12. I can stop the program here and fix this bug. Now if I run the program again, that bug is fixed. But the cost for the final test case of 25 donuts is still wrong. It should be 21. I'll try to debug this in a different way. I'll set a breakpoint where I believe the code should be doing this calculation. And I'll remove the original breakpoint. I'll click on the debug button to walk through the code when we take that breakpoint. But as you can see, it never got to that breakpoint. The bug may be obvious now, but I'll show you how we can use the debugger's tools to find it directly. I'll put a breakpoint on the call to the function where I get the price for 25 donuts and start debugging again. Now I'm at that call, and I can step into the function and follow the flow of the program by just stepping. It goes through the IF line, it gets to the ELIF, and I expect it to go to the ELSE statement, but stepping one more time takes us into the ELIF block instead. The bug is that this code only checks for a number of donuts greater than 12. Instead, that check should be a number of donuts less than 24. I'll fix that. With that change in place, I'll run the program again. Now I get the correct results. In summary, the debugger is an important tool for diagnosing program errors. It allows you to step through your code to help you identify where you've made a mistake. Through the use of breakpoints and related debugger controls, you can control the incremental execution of your program. With the stack trace panel, you can see the sequence of calls that your program took to get to a breakpoint. The debugger panel is most important as it allows you to see the value of your variables currently in scope. Using the debugger will help you track down errors much quicker than just using calls to print. Once you incorporate the debugger into your daily development routine, you won't know how you got along without it.